Hey, what's going on y'all? So you're joining this video because you decided you wanted to cut right to the chase and learn how to set up your additional security. And that security being multi-factor authentication, also known as two-factor authentication in the case of Proxmox. So that being said, let's go and jump into the video. Thanks. Now, I mentioned it before, good practice is to stop using the root user, which means you have to set up a brand new user. So let's go and show you how to do that. From here, we click on data center, and then we go over to users, and I'm going to start with creating a user called tester. Now, I didn't, I'm not assigning anything to this user yet. Now, one thing I want to point out, you'll see passwords option here, but let's see what happens when I try to fill in the password by creating a user in the GUI, which is a web interface we're looking at now. Look what happens. User doesn't exist, right? Well, what does that mean? I'm looking at the user. It shows the users here. It shows enabled, but yet Proxmo is saying it doesn't exist. Well, the reason why is this is a great time to point out. I love the fact that Proxmo did this. They separated the authentication and access model for the underlying hypervisor from the web GUI. So that means users in the web GUI have functionality, but that does not mean they have uh, access and functionality on the actual server directly. Beautiful layout. Now what I want to do before I add the user, identity access management really requires that we use the best possible structure here, which is sec attaching users to groups and giving the groups the permissions needed. So we set up a, a, a local group. Now, we just flip over to PV, the node, and we'll go to shell. Now, you don't have to log in, but we have already done that. We just run the simple uh, command add user, and that's just something that comes with any Unix based system. Give it a tester, which is the same name as the one in the GUI, okay? And then from here, we'll just go through, fill out the problem. I really don't fill this out normally anyway. But yeah, we'll get this done and we'll see what happens. All right, and now we should be able to go ahead and log in with this user. The password will be recognized by the GUI because they are now existing on the actual underlying hypervisor. There we go. So we are now logged in as tester. Now, if you recall, when I set up the group, I gave the group administrative level access, which means it allows me to create and manipulate by or meaning destroy it right all the crud methods allow me to do that for any container any virtual machine anything on the system and to prove that i'll go ahead and spin up a quick container and we'll go ahead and get that started just to show you it does work and this is to make sure that our configuration for permissions went through as we expected which it should all right I, you know me. I like testing everything I try, right? Because uh, there have been too many times where I put stuff into place and thought and said, hey, it's ready to rock and roll. It's going to go. And uh, yeah, it just totally fails. Uh, it takes multiple iterations to get it fixed and working properly. But, you know, that's life, right? So the best thing to do is learn how to test as you go. And this is part of it. So we're starting the machine up with a container. It's very important you understand that. It's a container, not a, not a virtual machine. And I prefer containers, which is another reason why I don't really like XCP-NG. They don't do containers in there uh, because containers are just much less resources used to get a lot of bang for your buck, right? Um, and they're very quick, very quick to spin up, very quick to manage and uh, migrate, whatever it is you're trying to do. They work operate a lot faster than VMs. <coughs> In fact, the only time I use a VM is when the 
uh, I guess the purpose of the machine and the software goes with that purpose requires certain type of um, libraries or uh, yeah libraries built into the operating system certain functionality that it requires the operating system is installed on to have and you'll run into that as you start to explore new stuff yeah it just won't install properly a lot of times it's because it requires a virtual machine to give certain resources make certain resources available all right so now we've done that we are yeah, we deleted it. So now we deleted the, the container. Let me show you one other thing. If you remember, I did add a user, but I did not give this user access to the sudo group, or I did not place it into the sudo group. And the sudo group in Ubuntu Debian flavors of Linux is the administrative group, the same group, root functions within, in a sense, right? So I didn't put Tester in that group. So I just want to show you that even though Tester is administrative rights on the web UI, once again, does not translate to have administrative rights on the actual hypervisor directly. And that's what this test is showing here. When I go into here, I try to switch over to Tester, which I obviously can do. But once I'm a Tester, I can't run update without sudo. And in fact, if I try to run sudo, it doesn't recognize it at all. That goes to prove they are totally separate. And this is a, something that really, if you're looking to show this or use this for, let's say you're consulting and you're trying to design a solution for someone, this is one of the selling points you want to point out to, hey, it's safe. Security, pro security processes are really, are really thought of first with this type of product and to go as far as to separate the web GUI from the underlying operating system, minimizing the attack surface for a bad actor. Something to keep in mind. In addition to creating a new user that has administrative rights, is to also set up MFA, multi-factor authentication. Now that just means that you can either do uh, something you know, which is a password, you always have that. Something you have, which we call a token, it could be a smart card, like a, I could have swore I have one around here, let me see, like a YubiKey of sorts, right? You can use one of these. Uh, or you use your mobile device with an authenticator app on it. And then the last thing is something you are, which is biometrics, right? So in this case, we're going to set up a token, which is not a YubiKey, but a token in the sense of my authenticator app. I'm going to do that with this particular account. Uh, so something I do encourage everyone to do when doing this type of setup, totally up to you though. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we go over back over to Data Center. We click under the permission section. We're going to click on two-factor authentication. And from there, we're just going to click on add. Now, you want to be logged in as the user you're going to do this for. So as you notice, I am still logged in as tester. I'm going to just show us some stuff, but I did not switch to root. So I'm saying as tester. Let's go and click on add TOTP. Do not ask me what it means. I have not looked at it. If you know, drop a comment. <clears throat> it's pretty much a quick Google I could <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I could just do a quick Google on what that means but hey it's just there just click button so let's see what happens we click on TOTP and here we're going to do a description whatever you want now yeah the secret and the QR code represent the same thing if you want to type it in manually I have no idea why you want to torture yourself that way as you can tell this key is not short uh, so I recommend using the QR code if you have an authenticator app that takes that. Please do that. Save your life. Well, save your time, which is also your life. All right. So we have the verification code. We enter in our password for that user. And there we have it. It says enabled and it says the type as TOTP. Now, I do also show you how to do, how to use a smart card like a YubiKey, which if you notice before, the drop down did have the option of Yubico, I think is what it said. Basically, YubiKey at the very bottom. I don't do that, okay? Um, the reason why is this channel, me, my personal preference, is to minimize the number of accounts uh, that I have out on the open web, which means I'm all about privacy. So I want to do as much self hosting as possible. So the other way of doing YubiKey is actually to do the web. Uh, often on the very top and I'll walk you through that later time okay but very quick for now this is good enough though okay let's keep going 
and we're gonna do the password and then we just put in our verification code that's on my authenticator app and we're in Bob's your uncle so we win this one all right all right so you made it to the end of setting up your uh, additional security around your users MFA TFA however you want to call it uh, I do ask that you go ahead if you have not already watch the other videos you may be interested in when it comes to Proxmox or any other ones on my channel. Uh, that being said, there are more videos coming up. I do want to make sure I include videos that you're interested in. So please, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. And uh, if you could, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye.